What's up, Brandon Smith here from thirdgym.com. And today we're gonna review Knees Over Toes Guy, his most popular video. Is Knees Over Toes Guy legit? Is what he doing worth your time? Let's kind of talk about this and figure it out. We're gonna watch the video together. So uh, let's get this started here and kind of see how things are going. I have no secrets. I went from 10 years of chronic knee pain, surgeries, nicknamed old man, so now, some of the most cool for these on earth, this one, never supposed to fully bend again because of its surgeries. This one, diagnosed tears I didn't operate on and it was only from the ATG system, not from foam rolling. I don't do any treatments or take any supplements of any kind, but I do add in the following seven mobility standards to fill in the gaps. For each movement, we're gonna look at the lowest entrance point. The standard that I believe any elite athlete can safely get. Okay, I like this well, part. Highest I've seen it done. Having so entry points is great. Progressions and regressions and exercise. The way in which uh, definitely good. Definitely good. Mentors helped me to form so I think the key thing here right now is find the one that works for you. Point is two feet, and the key form is actually actively flexing your tibial. So here's where I would stop. Boom. Okay, this is called reciprocal inhibition. So essentially what it means is that if you use a muscle on one side of the body, the muscle on the other side has to relax, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do it. If you want to flex your finger, my extensors have to relax. If they didn't relax, the finger would just be rigid. I'm going to make your life real easy. Right. So that's not anything new. You're just doing it under load here. 15 reps. With those are the highest I allow. Achilles and calf. I think of these. it's fine. So I, I, I think case, if you talk to any bodybuilder or anybody trying to grow their calves, they're going to tell you training sure stretch range of motion. John Meadows is very popular. Train the deep leg. stretch Why? range of motion. You're just going to grow your calves. And no doubt that's very true. I think doing a barefoot on your toes is even better. You're going to get peroneals involved there. Doing that 15 times would be the standard. Now, in terms of guys I've coached, two guys come to mind. They both jump even higher than I do. They both do closer to 50% on this. Like they have to literally put a, a wrist, you know, the wrist straps you use on deadlifts because- and I think that's good. I mean, I think so using strong. athletes to validate your, your work, that's good marketing, what you're gonna do. Did I, see uh, I would wanna see the people that aren't jumping that high, weight, but implement they this, could, and then watch them they jump high. higher than me, so me. I promise you- Or finding the average Joe seeing a lot of results. Well. Just so this, this method. The ones I do As we know, there's more to jumping than just your Achilles. 25%. Glutes and hamstrings, hip extensions, also the flex jumping. at the bottom of each rep. Extension. And no cheating is much tougher than it sounds. Those two jumpers, if you want to check them out, two great guys, Connor Barth and Xavier Pope. And I have a lot of good mentors on calves, but for this particular one, I want to credit Kadur Siani, who really I feel like is the number one pioneer of that active ankle mobility. Look up Kadur, 50 inch vertical in his prime. He's 47 now at five foot 11 is still dunking. So there's this huge misconception on the word ankle stiffness. It's backwards of what you think. I used to think, oh my God, I don't want flexible calves. Yeah, I that's don't, not true. I want he's, he's not wrong here on this whatsoever. I was completely um, wrong because actually- You just need tendinous adaptations. That's what we mean by can stiffness. Go through range, the more- You get tendinous adaptations that your Achilles ankle stiffness only and that's going to how strong you are now. here. I, not how stiff effect, you are, so from Kadur but like doing all your calf work in these full ranges of motion, ankle mobility, your pogos, and everything else, and won an Olympic um, gold medal. And it's I all going to work for you. Those guys would jump as high if they had stiff ankles, because then they wouldn't have been able to develop in there. Not to mention your soleus, which can only develop to the degree that your ankle can bend. So opening up the upper calves allows you to get in there, and we address this in the ATG system movements like crazy, and that has the strongest pull of any muscle in the human body. So actually by limiting yeah, I mean, that's ankle general physics, it's really getting long, ties the soleus, soleus strongest tendon, and having your knee bend activates the soleus more. Soleus. So there you go. Now you just got educated. Ankle stiffness, you've been tricked, you've been duped. I was too. And look at the success of guys like Kadur Ziani and Steph. Train full range of motion. In particular, Easy enough there. I feel like he's probably the top innovator in the world on that active flex. So check him out. And if you're worried about muscle size, check out Tom Platt's most range of motion of any bodybuilder ever, widely regarded as the best legs of all time. The lowest entrance point is simply reaching. Anyone should be able to at least 
touch their so I really like the Jefferson curl, however, if you have previous low back issues, that more just be cautious. Hamstrings. And the ability to round the back um, light loads up to 20. The big thing about rounding here, I'm going to pause this, when you're is that I don't know if you can see this video or not. I want to kind of blow it up. So in this position, he's able to make space, but I hope you can tell that his pelvis is essentially um, coming forward here. And he's, he does have good hamstring mobility, no question, but I hope you can see how much he's rounded across his back to be able to create this this presentation um so hamstring mobility is certainly important but you've also got to be able to make space uh in the in the posterior part of the the body especially the upper back the mid back um and even more particularly the lower part of the glutes for everything to go backwards so again not hating on the jeff girl not hating on what he's doing just bring into limelight here uh, some more information on you about about the Jefferson curl and and how you can get that position. That's why not everybody can do this. This is you got to work up to this kind of like what he has said. Your wrist gets below toes, gives you a more bulletproof lower back. Now I have seen careful saying bulletproof lower back, such as well, some people need stiffness, other people need motion and lotion. Ziani, just depends. Is teaching me that to kick the rim, and if I this is almost the opposite of Stu McGill. Stu McGill said we shouldn't be able to have any kind of flexion. Here, you gotta right? let their shit go weight. This is He's not saying you need all the flexion in the world. You have to make Probably somewhere in between. Contact of knee there, and then kick. Very tough and requires Again, more. His tissues range. are really good. So I'm not gonna argue for that. For someone needing to progress to more range, I do think that would border into more extreme activities. Probably a martial artist who's trying to be the best in the world. So you can see here would allow, oh yeah. So I could see that if I want to reach that goal of kicking the rim, I'm gonna have to go farther. Now the person who taught me the Jefferson curl and who taught me that it was okay to round the back was Jeff Wolf at the Flexi Bowl on Instagram. And we had a ton it's of- okay to round your lower back. back. I'm not gonna disagree with that. We work it every which way. It just depends on how you're gonna we work it use literally. this exercise. As, like, to whatever you your can training. do with your back, we work it. Okay, so you it doesn't mean- You need to be in those extreme ranges of motion and trying to squat a freaking house. To two days a week. This might be too much. And I only advise up to 25%. But what if you- in You only advise up to 25%. So that's pretty good. So for someone like me, that's like 35, 40 pounds. At that point, does the risk 15, of 20 pound dumbbells be or plenty? Does the risk I would agree. The Maybe even give us a shot. Which is back more to the fields. I personally, uh, just to see. Because I do have low back issues. So. Reason, I drove this with Jeff watching me to 100% of my body weight, wrist below toes, and I was fine. Okay? Don't be offended. I'm giving you the truth there. 25%, I've seen very safe, and the literature looks really safe for. I don't advise going, I don't go over that. Okay? But. If I wanted to be the best wrestler in the world and I had to pick people up and, and stuff like that, probably even in football, I would probably go closer to 50%. But again, this is for you to say. I'm just a, a cheap guy. So, hey, thanks. I'm glad that he had a little disclaimer there. So that's good. Because, again, I kind of pick this off based on how you're doing things. Ball. I don't want to get too flexible. But your goals are definitely going to be pinned here. Vertical. You're just, you're just being a wuss. Then, in person, Dmitry Klokov, ah, power snatch 400 pounds in front of me after doing shit like chest to floor pancake to warm up, which I was nowhere near, and I realized I was just a total wuss. I was half the explosion of Dmitry Klokov, Olympic medalist, and I was just fooling myself, and you're only gonna find strength coaches with half Dmitry's explosion telling you not to get flexible. So I, the I, I disagree with that. Williams, ask Coaches Rogers, are not going to tell you to get flexible. They're going to tell you to meet the demands of your sport. Ask Kador. Ask Jeff I don't need to be able to do that and if you want to squat and block. This is my or if you want to be a line. You know, I can be benefit basketball of doing that in a restoration big stream block. Upper calf back I don't know so any tight. team coaches we that don't want to see really the athlete find out more mobile and move better. We know that athletes that can move outperform athletes that can't. Range of strength. Um, bringing this to the table of we're just going to be finding the most optimal board. way to get our athletes there. Jefferson Curl. There's probably more to think, but those are definitely the big three. Kadur, Jeff, Lucas. Thank you guys. I have no intention of offending anyone with these videos. Just giving you real solutions. Just think if you were an NFL strength coach, now I do one you have a Jefferson curl to a lineman and, and I maintain a pretty 
Easy I have a job more. front split, which I never set out to get. So it can be so much simpler when you get strong through range, you actually load the tissues and it's proven you can lengthen the area instead of tightening back up, tightening back up, tightening back up. Yeah. I spent about 10 minutes Again, total. strength at length. Stretching, just eight to do system. Plus Getting long, one round of this, but training in those lengths. Twice a week to get, get strong there. in those lengths. It about six times longer. Make I learned from my original mentor, Charles Paul. Get six times longer to get a range of motion. Get and you moving better. Myself. I keep it once a week and I'm moving proof of that. But I did it more like six sets per week. I like two days a week, three sets to get there. Okay. The most so important that's thing pretty good. to He's know about, about how frequently you should be doing this stuff. Obviously, if you want to improve the range of motion, you're needing more sets and more time under these, excuse me, under these loads. And if you're trying to maintain where you're currently at, then you can get away with less. Pretty normal standard training recommendations. Uh, I like that he kind of gives some suggestions. Sounds like six sets is what he's recommending. Um, so sounds like twice, I mean, basically every day for six days. Um, he said six sets, so maybe that's two days, three times, three sets, three days, two sets, something like that. Is that didn't really go I into? Don't even believe it's worth training. Exact hill specifics there, but that's a the way we work. Out, I guess. Zero is just a couch stretch. And this is shoulder. this is the big one that I have an issue here. Is the couch stretch that he's got? Again, not a, we use a couch stretch. We coach it though. So. so notice how his low back here. I'm gonna kind of pull this up. Notice that his low back is like super extended in that lumbar extension. I, I personally don't like that. Uh, he's obviously got great tissue quality in his quads and his legs to be able to keep and get in that position because I couldn't do that. Um, but at the same time, he's extending through his lower back to be able to anterior orient his pelvis, which is then going to let him get that position a little bit easier. Not saying that he couldn't do this correctly, um, but I'm betting he would lose contact with that if he actually had to squeeze his right glute in this picture, get his pelvis underneath him, everything was stacked, he probably couldn't do it. Okay, so I don't like the lumbar extension part. That's just me, uh, but he's kind of going over the tendinous and the muscular part, I guess. So I guess we'll kind of uh, live with it there for today. There's the wall. Then in dense, we work on getting that hip flexor forward. Same Through thing, zero, kind of here. Dense and standard. Going forward, we're building. But again, he's doing that crazy flexor, extension flexor, pattern in the low back that I don't and like. Quad the split strength squat part that he's doing. All the way up through here with the ATG like. split squat. Great. So for Great. me, I put those together and I was able to do this the first time I ever tried it. Glutes locked, shoulders all the way to the floor. And then notice I'm not bending at the hip to get back up. Pure strength to get back up. That is the standard. And the average person do this? Probably work not. Work on it at your own pace by first Find a way to work up to something like this. Zero Use dense. it cool thing is, You don't have to reach all the goals of like zero that. to go on to dense. You don't go have to, to reach where? all the goals of dense to go on to standard. I like 12, 12, 12 even for myself. I go. I like 12 weeks out of the year body weight, 12 weeks out of the year doing more sets in less time with not as much weight, and then 12 weeks out of the year in standards trying to go harder, followed by 12 weeks genetic potential, which will be where I actually will be actively sprinting and jumping. Yeah, talking about programming and maximally, stuff. Maximum tap out, right? It's a I think he's going to get some year. basic structure So here. with this, I do want to tell you that I found a 25% of body weight thing to help some guys because if you've been training for a while and have smaller legs and bigger upper body, you may need the weight actually to sort of counterbalance yourself. See that? Counterbalance so gap, talk about the assistant. Right like here. Trying to get the idea right. Uh, Finding a way to... Uh, Get off of that. So, Very but here, counterbalance to make it more manageable. It's easier way. Now, the recommendation I have is probably putting like a again, box again, behind again, you where you can just go back. This is something that I think you need to go through another level motion over time. to even work on. Now, be probably another way to have some feedback. Start with a lighter plate. You see what I'm saying? So, again, the heaviest I would allow would be 25%. I have not seen any reason to go higher than that. I have found that by adjusting that angle, I can challenge myself. And what's really cool that I really should have mentioned is that just by doing this one set a week, I'm able to maintain my same one set a week. couch stretch standard that impressive. I did have to work on much more often to get to. So that's the cool thing, is that by getting to the strength through here, and it's proven to reduce injury through here, which is awesome. I love when we use movements that are proven. I hope more and more of our movements get proven. Proven now, injury reduction. Thank on this one. Uh, I've really seen I don't a lot know about that one, man. I want to see the study. You have to say. Ashley really Jass hard to say exercise. Florida, Florida of Jiu Jitsu Gymnastic injury, Body they reduce just like Jeff Wolf, the who risk I mentioned of the injury. Last video. She was the first uh, that I saw. Doing this and honestly that got me to open my eyes to body weight movement, and I became 
interested in what she was doing, we became great friends. And that's actually essentially how I what I would say so is so actually having thanks training in bigger ranges of motion that's with something load, as simple would as probably lead to, to so less. Powerful. If you've known me closely, then you know for years I've been looking excuse me? for a way to load the parallel. Okay, this is the one that I really, really like. Smooth and safe way, and I finally did find it. People have really tight because there's something that I always do have to it's usually an issue performance and and now because issues this, across I only have to do one set a week across the country are really bad. And that is from sitting a lot to a stretch um, like this and being able to touch my head, and I did. You know, for some things I do a set before to see where it's at, but I now know for the first time that I can just go head to ankle without being prepared for it. Again, some of that is because you have space in your backside really to be able to get in that position because you're super tonic on the backside. Good morning. So Essentially, that weight way. helps you I'm get that load. space. That's what that Better load is doing is going to help go pull up. you down, Again, help you falsely get some of that space. The question so, would be, would it stick? He seems to think if you do this. Six sets a week, so we'll say and two sets think, three times this one really a week. For people. Some people super flexible. Some I think he said like twelve tight. to fifteen reps is on average what he's exactly recommended on most of his what I'm showing. His rep you can start or his exercises. I'm sorry, right? But never more than fifteen. And then just get where you're you're handling some more of your weight, right? handling more, and then you can start holding a light load and getting down. And that's the standard we want to maintain. And for this one, for a lot of them, I have a really specific idea of where to go farther. The person I've seen, not to sound like a broken record, but the person I've seen go farther than this is Kadur Ziani. Okay, this is the most flexible pair of I've ever this seen. This makes my hips hurt. 15 no, thank vertical not doing prime, it. 47 years old, 5 foot 11, still ducky. I would look into his stuff because I actually don't know for sure because of me being a guy who I used to have, it doesn't happen anymore, but if you've had it, it's one of the worst things. It's called tibiofibular dislocation. Your knee pops out. And doctors tell you, yeah, we don't really know what happened. We think it's your meniscus. People around the world, you can look at a discussion board. I'll put it in the description of this video. Thousands of people have had surgeries completely mistakenly thinking they had a torn meniscus, but it was actually this lower area. His diagnosis happens a lot more than I would like to admit with uh, complicated joints, knees, hips, shoulders. I grew up so scared of that happening to me because it's happened to me over a hundred times and it's really frightening and sometimes i don't know if he's saying this exercise in, is going to help can't walk prevent so that that would be a bold in. claim super traumatic stuff if you've been there even more traumatic when you think you're the only person on earth who has it because no doctors that you're going to know what it is and constantly misdiagnose you and even some people end up with full-on surgeries completely mistakenly anyways I was scared even looking at what could I just don't know. So if you want to I don't know about that one. Take that further. I, I'm, a little, I'm a little skeptical on that. that um, I cannot get the assistance on how to go further. This I do think loading the piriformis like this, though, is like what a fantastic idea. Years, and it's given me a and finding different ways to load it. Body weight, head, um, check out Kudur for more. I think super sitting super down and dense into it would also be a good thing. Oh, here we go. So yeah, like these, these are all great modifications for any other stretch. It's not like our normal exercises where you have to send in your last set, blah, 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 blah. But with this or any stretch, definitely write in. If you're having any difficulty, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. Or you can't find the right setup because we often have other ways of doing it in case. Yeah, these are all good. These are all good modifications for performance-based stuff. Video on the previous the cross ball on there as well. This is Can one of my tissues. And many others with that tight performance. Thought we would Opened up a little bit to. before you do this. Then full credit. This I really like too. Loading the adductors load with this. weight. I'm actually trying to pull apart with the performance and pushing his hips down. My thigh all the way down. Um, so this is something. Essentially, he's loading the performance and the adductors. This is only 25% total. You don't have using to the pure form as I'm starting to like help pull his legs down. You'll want to start I think it's bad. I just relax. Do the work. You see this? Again, for simple this ambition. Do the work. Not so new for a training perspective. Starting this is nothing new. Yes, the adductor is down, but right here you can let gravity do the work. Yes, this is a many people have tight adductors, tight performance, tight hamstrings. Keep those quads engaged. Height, calves, just load. the nature so, of where we're at I think in today's is society. One of the so simpler ones. Motion is lotion. He's picking some good stuff. Performance is tight itself. You may never get all the way down. And then the loading becomes really a game changer. And it allows you to directly get in there. A very tricky area to strengthen through range. You can do isometrics and stuff, but I found that this is the king along with the ATG split squat for protecting that groin because of how the groin tweaks in sports 
when it's under low through range. Yeah, he's the right. Lots of groin issues in sports. Uh, we're not training in a wide base stance. We're not doing enough lateral lunges. We're not doing enough adductor strengthening and our strength conditioning. We're able to respect our athletes to go do high, high work. Reach. Come back in. As you're People ready. forget that the adductors do help with that. With, uh, right. Excuse me, do help with hip extension. That's usually where they're getting taxed the most. That's why the deep split squats so work. Elbow to floor. Gives a measure. This is gonna be a no for me. Uh, I ain't doing this one. Cool. Now, pain away. Barbell. I believe they usually do it. Partners. Nope. It themselves. <laughs> That's not happening. Imagine if I put this Not with my low back history. Sorry for any up close and personal shots. I'm working on pancakes here now. We'll see where I can get to today. I just do one set a week of maintenance, but you can see them loading bar all the way. Chest. Yeah, baby. Got my chest. Dog out. looks impressed. Quadratus lumborum time. It's the this, final this, countdown. Out of all this stuff, this is my favorite this one like on this one video front, for sure. QL is highly, highly way, undertrained in many people. With your back it causes a lot of issues. But this is an exercise that helps way, me every time I do this back, exercise. You're gonna tip I feel it. Keeps you and I QL keeps the next day. On a plane this way. So if you send in your form on this, we've coached this so many times, you can send it here. Now get your hip wedged right into the middle there. You would want to start by just handling your own weight. Your I would own agree. Weight. Starting with body weight, going a full I mean, range of motion. Three sets of 15. Exactly what I do in my training. You are. I'm using this Quad, in my back to the letter. You really side. want to up the ante on this when you get down there, big Quad inhale, rattles, lumborum, big exhale, and then now, come up. You get a full breath cycle at the bottom of each rep. You're obviously going to do less reps, but right here, um, that breath is going to get you some posterior you expansion. Use a you can use light weight and dig in there. Just get used to that load. Real same small, thing. Right? I mean, real small kettlebell motion. slide bin, yeah. kettlebell slide bin. Once I give these to my power lifters every now and then just to keep the reps moving and things feeling good. Rotational People power, believe under, it Under undervalue you this exercise. From my no original question. mentor, Charles Baldwin, the year we integrated this, I trained the world's longest driver. A perfect set. All six balls in play. They like this one. Four, zero, two. Oh, he likes this one. He's making some noise. And That's all cool, our baseball players started throwing harder, hitting harder. Don't be surprised yeah. to have extreme imbalances. Yeah. Between sides. Great thing, QL, obliques. Of what you think because all that's going to help with facial athletes. Right? No brainer there. I measured myself. I really like when I'm standing here, though. I could reach higher with my right arm than I could with my left. Now it's evened out. That could be some, some PRI-based stuff. Okay. Actually I'm not going to say that that's just because he is weak on one side. So you would think this would be my strong side because it's the right. But actually this Your diaphragm is pretty strong your right. That pulls more to the right. Everyone's got a left, a weaker left side on their obliques and their QL. That's just the way it works. <sighs> Our so body turned is, towards the right. What is it, Wednesday? That's biomechanics. And I'm still a not going to say that him dunking is yes. annoying. Yes. The only reason why it's like that. Light and dense. But, but now he doesn't even help him. So ultimately, that's you really good. Bulletproof back. Think how many back injuries. How many of them happen on a perfect run? No, it's often going to get something here or making a move. He's right. right. You're that's tweaking your back. You're doing so weird shit. As you go outside of that forward range, so, boom. Picking up your clothes basket or moving the dog or whatever. You can start it. Never lifting weights. Just real light. You can start it. <clears throat> Talking to a guy who threw his back out of hip switches. Okay, just I get it. In there, but you are gonna need one of these. The cool thing is, like, this is one of the cheapest pieces of. Okay, gym I'm gonna stop there. I think you guys kind of got the idea. That was a very good video. Lots of good stuff there. I, I think if I had to give you uh, some key takeaways, here would be my key takeaways. Number one. Train through a full range of motion all the time, except for your like key performance lifts. If you're a squat bench, deadlift, overhead press, you know, whatever, do what you need to do for the competition's sake of training, and you'll be good there. But on some of your accessory work, it wouldn't hurt you to do a set or two of Jefferson curls uh, as a warm up. It wouldn't hurt you to, um, you know, do one of those ATG split squats. Uh, or just do a front foot elevated goblet split squat and just really hammer some depth and, and not have a bunch of weight. The side bends, I'm 100% on, on those. I think those help a lot. I think that's something you can implement into your upper body days as part of a warm up. Just go over there, 
to the 45 degree back extension or the glute ham raise knockout sets of 10 to 20 on each side for two to three sets every upper body day that's going to immediately help everything feel better and the nice thing is the reason i recommend that is because it's not going to affect your upper body training right if you're benching or rowing or doing arms it's not going to affect your training but if you put it on a lower body day you kind of pre fatigue some stuff and yeah, you want that i i would do that before i squatted let's just say that um this is obviously the opposite in the spectrum of Stu McGill, where Stu McGill is kind of big on the stiffness, um, you know, really controlling what you're doing. And this is saying, hey, train through a big range of motion. I think it's somewhere in between. I think if you're super, super stiff, you need some of this. If you're not super stiff, when you should be super stiff, then you might need some McGill stuff. So that's the way that I would look at these movements. The performance stuff's good. The adductor stuff's good. Uh, find good introduction ways for you to get into some of these, and I think you'll be good. Um, I, I think that's all I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it there. I really like a lot of his stuff. Uh, I, I don't think he's got anything new. I think this is all older stuff that's now getting repurposed in 2021, whenever this came out in the 2020s. Um, but if you go back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, as many of the videos he's showing, people are already doing this stuff. So. I think he does a good job giving credit due where he got stuff. So props to him on that. Um, so if I were you, that's the way I would take stuff. Find a couple things to implement in your training system. Use them slowly. Don't try to max out Jefferson Curls week one. And I think you'll be okay. Um, so that's all I've got. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, and if you got any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks. Have a great day.